The World Artificial Intelligence Conference 2022 was held in Shanghai and included in an exhibition of robots and technology. We've collected all the most interesting things about robots, artificial intelligence, and the other future technologies in today's one episode. Here we go. The theme of this year's World Conference was Intelligent Communication, the Infinite Multiverse. Because of strict measures to prevent a new round of pandemics, some of the participants were presented online or in the Metacomicverse. Among the innovations were robots, brain-computer interfaces, augmented reality glasses, artificial intelligence chips, drones, and more. The conference was opened by virtual presenter Shen Xiaoya. There were many VR gadgets and technologies at the exhibition, including the entire spaces of meta-universes, where you could scan yourself in 3D with cameras and a special balloon and then customize your avatar according to a number of parameters. Would you like your own avatar like this? Let us know! SenseTime brought its robotic chess player to the exhibition. The bot was able to beat visitors at a game of Chinese chess. The robot masseur is now a must at every robot show. At WAIC, it was the Ryzen 4 robot arm from Shanghai-based startup Flexiv. The company also brought to the show a robot for automated testing of COVID-19. The smart arm performs the entire process, from swabbing with a cotton swab to placing a sample in a test tube. Equipped with visual recognition technology and highly flexible force sensors, the mechanical arm can locate the right point to swab people of different heights, while getting it safely and conveniently. The robot can test 240 people in just two hours. That's pretty fast, isn't it? So, there's a robotic surgeon. The robot joint surgery system for Microport Medbot was presented at Shanghai. And by the way, this Chinese company is the only manufacturer of surgical robots in the world covering five main specializations, laparoscopy, orthopedics, percutaneous, and panvascular surgery in a single orifice surgery. But that's not enough for the company. It has eight more products in the pipeline, and in general, the robotic surgeons are one of the most in-demand areas right now. Also at the exhibition, we saw a firefighter robot from Deep Robotics, which recently presented its Yuying X20 robot. It cannot put a fire out, but according to the developers, it can go into smoke-filled buildings to explore the area, find people in need, or bring firefighters extra oxygen tanks and equipment. Interestingly, the company's website doesn't say anything about the fire resistance of the robot. All we know is that its housing has an industrial-grade IP66 protection which allows the robot to work in conditions such as heavy rain, sand, low temperatures, and hail. The robot is equipped with a panoramic camera and dual-spectrum suspension that allows it to transmit real-time images from different angles. The robot also has a thermal imager to track heat sources. The robot can step over obstacles with a height of 20 centimeters and climb up a slide with an angle of up to 35 degrees. The exhibition was not without Cloud Minds technology. A pair of humanoid robots from the company entertained visitors by imitating the actors of a Chinese opera. And this was probably the most remarkable robot performance at WAIC. Another robot from the Cloud Ginger XR1 series portrayed a hotel maid. It was a pity that the demonstration of the robot's work was only on screen and in the form of graphics. It still wasn't clear whether the robot would have been able to vacuum the show floor or not. The Chinese augmented reality glasses pioneer Enreal brought the latest Enreal Air and Enreal X to the show. The new Enreal Air is said to provide the best visual display effects of any extended reality device, but at the same time only weigh 80 grams, and that design is very cool. What do you think? The Enreal X is a consumer augmented reality goggle that weighs only 106 grams. They're designed to create a fully immersive augmented reality experience through a real-time precision positioning algorithm and map construction using a pair of built-in cameras. The Chinese already have no doubt that AR will become the next generation computing platform, and more and more such startups are appearing in the domestic market. 
In general, the Chinese are very fond of virtual reality, and the largest number of users for this type of technology will be the gamers. Also on display was a robot rescuer from Zuhai Yungzhao Intelligent Technology, which recently saved a drowning boy. The robot is autonomous, equipped with high precision positioning and video control. The robot can be used on beaches and rivers and will swim to a drowning person faster than a lifeguard can. Also at WAIC was JD Logistics Autonomous Smart Delivery Trucks, which have been traveling the streets of China for a long time now. Once loaded, the Level 4 autonomous robots build a route taking into account all deliveries of the address and waits for customers at each point for a certain amount of time. Apple's Vice President and Managing Director of Apple Greater China, Yi Yui, spoke at the conference about Apple's machine learning projects. According to her, they can now cover almost all aspects of the company's operations, but only cited that the Apple Watch and AirPods Pro for example so far. Another example given was the assistive touch feature with the Apple Watch, which the company introduced last year along with the iPad gaze tracking, which should support users with disability. Assistive touch for watchOS allows users to control functions without touching the display or controls. The built-in motion sensors, such as gyroscope and accelerometers, along with other optical heart rate sensors and machine learning, help the smartwatch detect subtle differences in muscle movements and tendon activity and, for example, move the cursor across the display through a series of hand gestures such as pinching or squeezing. An interesting statement was made by Baidu CEO Robin Lee. At the conference, he said that fully autonomous vehicles will develop faster than semi-autonomous vehicles and will appear on the roads sooner than people expect. And it's not about the development of technology, but the definition of responsibility in case of an accident. In the case of a driver assistance system, such as Tesla's, all the blame for an accident will fall on the driver, since he's obliged to keep his eyes on the road. In the case of fully autonomous cars, the responsibility would fall on the developer. But with semi-autonomous cars of level 3, everything is ambiguous. On the one hand, level 3 assumes that the car can move independently and only sometimes requires a pilot's attention. But in this case, who will be responsible for the accident? Baidu believes that this contradiction will not allow semi-autonomous cars to develop. Lee is worth listening to, given that Baidu has caused a fury in the autonomous vehicle market in China by obtaining the country's first commercial license to operate a fully unmanned robot cab. The company also recently unveiled the stunning Jaidu branded Robo-1 unmanned robot car at the latest fully autonomous Apollo RT6 with a removable steering wheel. Incidentally, Baidu's Apollo Go Robotaxi has already taken more than 1 million trips. Ant Group, Alibaba's financial technology subsidiary, unveiled its intelligent risk management system to quickly detect and intervene in fraudulent digital transactions. One of the key features is the tiered mechanism is a 90-second alert call from the platform's AI assistant. The system can provide individual sensors by analyzing user feedback in real time during the call and complete the process if necessary. The point is that the 90 second pause should give the customer time to realize they're being scammed and cancel the transaction. Other anti-fraud innovations include a 15 minute recovery period and a 24 hour transfer delay. Shanghai company Visatai Technologies, which specializes in the development of high-performance general-purpose chips, presented its own 7 nanometer cloud GPU at the conference. The chip combines features including rendering, artificial intelligence, video, and offers high-quality coding capabilities. The device provides optimal performance for cloud gaming, computing, and other metaverse application scenarios. Xera, another Shanghai-based chip company, has unveiled a technology, you might say with an unpronounceable name, called Axi Nin Zimhu. Well, you get it. It should help chips quickly improve large image quality, as well as breaking the ceiling of traditional video processing capabilities in a number of key scenarios. Other Chinese companies such as Enflame and Byron Technology also showed their new products. The latter introduced a recently released series of general-purpose graphics processor chips. 
which as they say, are world class in terms of processing power and energy efficiency. The semiconductor industry in China is now developing at an unprecedented rate, trying to close the gap with leading companies such as AMD and Nvidia. This is primarily due to sanctions imposed on China. Well, the analogs of AMD and Nvidia processors will be useful not only for China and in general, the competition for the market is actually a good thing. So let's wish some luck to the Chinese. And I say goodbye until the next episode. Follow the Pro Robots channel and join us over on Instagram to keep up with all of the latest news from the world of high tech.